I am Canadian, but I do not speak French. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. On today's What I Eat in a Day YouTuber review, we are going to be talking about Natasha Ocean. I think that's how you say your name. I see the little Esantagu and the bad Canadian in me is like trying to think French, but I'm struggling. So girl, I'm really sorry if I said your name wrong, but um, Natasha is known in the YouTube world for a lot of kind of fitness related content, um, some kind of health, nutrition. She's also been very open about her past struggles with disordered eating. Over the last little while, Natasha has talked about her transitioning to intuitive eating and that lifestyle, um, especially given that she's coming from the fitness industry. I really think that's so important because it's so heavily steeped in diet culture. But if you just look at like a year ago, a lot of her videos still have titles like, you know, lose fat, stay strong and lose fat and keep it off and things like that. So these are, these are concepts that are heavily steeped in diet culture and are very weight centric. But if you circle back today, you'll see titles like how fitness ruined my health, um, as well as some what I eat in a day about intuitive eating, etc. I have watched a bunch of her videos now. I think she's super fun. She's insightful. She's clever. She's got lots of energy, but is Natasha fully embracing an intuitive eating lifestyle? Well, let's take a look at her day. Having my homemade granola. You guys don't know how unbelievably happy it makes me that I've made so much granola that it fills all of these jars. In fact, I made so much that it overflowed and I've got my reserve just here. So love granola, that looks delish. It actually looks a lot like the granola that I have in my cookbook, the Mindful Glow cookbook. So I'm loving it. Also, it looks like there's chocolate in there. So looks like a good start to the day. But yeah, she's got some slow digesting carbs and some fiber from the oats and the fruit and the nut butter in there. Um, also, that's gonna keep her satisfied longer and help stabilize her blood sugar. I also see that there are some healthy fats in there from the peanut butter. Also, peanut butter is life, let's be real. I think if I was being like really nitpickety, I would say she could have a little bit more protein for her breakfast because um, research has shown that it may help to reduce mindless snacking. Um, um, and also just kind of provide that satiety factor. I think a lot of people struggle to get enough protein at breakfast and then they really kind of have a massive portion of protein at lunch and dinner when really the maximum amount that our bodies can utilize for muscle protein synthesis is about 30 grams per meal or snack. So I really do like to see us spacing things out. But in general, I think it looks like really, really tasty and good. The only thing is about getting up early and like rushing is that I haven't had time to do my full morning routine. <laughs> I've got to say, I've never been so excited for a Girl, take some time to take a please. No, but seriously, I think prioritizing our health often starts with a really thoughtful morning routine. It just sets the tone for the rest of the day. So always give yourself enough time to eat and get ready and have your morning BM. Our body has a bit of an internal clock and if you expect it to go at the same time every day, you can get into a nice little routine. This ultimately helps ensure regularity and keeps you on track of your digestion. Okay, so I like skipped through a bunch of stuff that did not involve food and I don't know what time it is right now when she's doing her workout. It seems like a lot of time has passed since she had her granola and I don't know about you, but I could not be squatting that matrix or whatever the heck she's doing without any real protein in the morning. I'd probably be really, really hangry by now. now Whatever time it is, my recommendation is before a workout, you wanna have a meal about one to two hours before you work out so that you don't get too crampy. Ideally something with some combination of carbohydrates and protein. If it's gonna be a, a lot longer before you get to train, then you could have a small snack beforehand, ideally something with some carbohydrates, just to give you a little boost of energy, and then focusing on the carbohydrates and the protein post-workout. So in Tasha's case, that granola that she had would make an amazing pre-workout snack. Um, assuming that of course she's not training hours and hours and hours later but she's got that combination of the slow burning complex carbohydrates for satiety as well as the quick burning carbs for energy and I'm having some new to say as well because I need 
I need some fast fuel carbohydrate. That's brutal. That is brutal. Girl, so much respect. Can't not do that. Shit. Okay, well, there's the snack action. And I agree, you know, electrolyte drinks or sports drinks are a good way to replenish electrolytes um, and also to give some fast, accessible carbohydrate based energy. But here's the deal if you're doing a long, intense workout, something that's longer than an hour, or you're working out in the heat and you're sweating a lot, then yes, you could benefit from a sports drink. However, if your workout is less than an hour or you're not sweating too much, then water is typically fine. If you really want the benefits of the sports drink but want to save money, then of course, this could easily be a banana and some water with a pinch of salt in it. They were like, it's really good to do resistance training and impact stuff because bones are anti fragile. You sound like a school Which teacher. Basically, yeah. Bones are anti fragile. What are bones? Anti fragile. Three marks. What Mario is saying is that our bones repair when we give them moderate stress. So the same thing we do with muscles where we're looking for those little micro tears, those micro tears allow our muscles to grow and strengthen. A similar process essentially occurs with our bones. So when we strength train, we put our bones under some minor stress and that stress allows our bones to rebuild and strengthen. This process is called osteogenesis. Now to begin osteogenesis, you need some kind of mechanical load on your bones. So usually this is some kind of like strength training, weights, something heavy that you need to pick up. So you don't need to do hit in order to improve your bones if that does not suit your body. This right here would not work for me. Resistance training is really important at any age. When we know that our bones are fully formed by about the age of 25, we know that lifting weights can help keep our bones strong and prevent osteoporosis. Resistance training can also reduce your risk of falls and breaking bones, which in turn can improve your quality of life. Bottom line, lifting heavy up is good for you. So um, what do you do for a living? I lift things up and put them down. Excuse me? I lift things up and put them down. Love, love, love poke bowls. I mean, bowls are super trendy and I admittedly Uber eats these pricey little way more than I should, but I love them because they're inherently pretty well balanced. You've got your protein, your veggies, your fat, and your carbs. And the protein is particularly important post-workout to help prepare and build muscles. And she's getting an ideal amount, about 30 grams, which is really the optimal amount that our body can utilize for muscle protein synthesis. I also love that she's not skimping out on the carbs. I think a lot of people think that post-workout is just about the protein, but carbs actually elicit a little bit of an insulin response that helps drive the protein into the muscle to help aid in recovery faster. So. I love it. All right, let's hit up another snack. I mean, smoothies are great. I don't think we should rely on them exclusively every day, but they're a great way to sneak in some extra produce, especially if you are like really busy on the go. And considering that Natasha doesn't even have time to poop in the morning, I guess this fits her lifestyle pretty well. Having said that, I think it's important to note that a lot of smoothie bowls, particularly the store-bought ones, tend to be really high in sugar. Yes, of course, the sugar is coming from natural sources like fruit, which is great, but if we're not pairing it with adequate protein and or fat, or if those fruits are kind of like the lower fiber fruits like bananas and mango, which is typical, we can still see a little bit of a blood sugar spike and drop off. If you're making a smoothie bowl at home, which is great, I recommend adding some Greek yogurt or tofu as your base. It's gonna add your protein. You could put some nut butter in there, add some fats, uh, maybe add some vegetables in there and try to stick to just one or two servings of fruit. All right, girl, I'm hungry, feed me dinner.
this looks so good. I love that Natasha is adding so many colorful vegetables to her stir fry here. We got carrots and peppers and chilies and, and pak choy. So much good stuff going on. Um, I also love that she's got some plant-based protein in the form of tofu here. Um, really, really great source of protein. And I think a lot of people have concerns about soy, but I want you to know that the research has found that it is completely safe. Soy contains compounds called isoflavones, which is the type of phytoestrogen that mildly mimics our body's natural estrogen. However, there's no strong evidence to suggest that consuming foods that are rich in soy causes any kind of hormonal diseases or disruptions or any other side effects. In fact, some research suggests that it may actually have a protective effect against diseases like heart disease and some types of cancer, like prostate, ovarian, and breast cancer. I have a whole video all about that right here. This looks like a pretty well-balanced meal to me. We've got some protein and some fiber that'll help keep us satisfied um, and some carbohydrates from the glass noodles. It looks totally yum. I really like the Natasha experiments in the kitchen. Um, I think that healthy eating does not need to be complicated. It does not need to look like an Instagram worthy dish every single night. And I also think it's a fun way to kind of bond with your partner, um, try new foods and get away from eating the same thing every single night. One. This needs a glass of milk. You need a chair for a glass? Yeah, because it's not just any glass. Oh. This is a special oh. end glass. Oh, wonderful. It's so hot in our flat that it's basically liquid. It's a bit like wine. You store it at different temperatures. <laughs> I do the same with Lint Lindor. So I have some at room temperature, and that can vary. Right now, up there is about 30 degrees. <laughs> it's not that hot. Oh my God, girl, you know what is the best? Put a caramel bar in the freezer, and then when you take it out, you put it in your mouth frozen, and like the caramel kind of heats up and explodes in your mouth. My grandpa used to do it all the time, and every single time I have a caramel bar, I think of him. Just, I, I, need, to, I need to try it. Girl, do this with me now. If I can get into it, it'll all be okay. Wait a minute, come in. Oh God, oh God, everyone's laughing. This is the best death film day ever. All right, move along. Okay, but seriously, Natasha has definitely made a lot of improvement in her relationship with food. I love that she is like, fully invested in her chocolate game. And despite the fact that she's an active part of the fitness community where let's be real, macros are life. I like that she's not afraid to be a little bit flexible with her diet. On that note, let's pull up the macros. So Natasha's consuming about 2,250 calories, 59% of which are from carbs, 27% from fat and 14% from protein. So let's talk about what we like about Natasha's day. So first of all, it looks like she's getting enough calories. Natasha is an active girl. And I mean, those workouts look super, super tough. And I love that she's not afraid to eat in a way that fuels her body and supports her workouts. Number two, she's got a great varied diet. I love that I'm seeing a nice wide variety of foods and nothing is specifically or explicitly demonized here. I'm seeing a ton of different vegetables, fruit, protein, um, good fats, and even some chocolate. So looks really balanced to me. Number three, she doesn't demonize dessert. Now, speaking of chocolate, I feel like this is the only influencer that I've reviewed who doesn't consume dessert or chocolate and talk about it as a guilty pleasure or lament about how they're being so bad, but rather she's really fun about it. She even talks about the kind of the sensual experience of eating chocolate, which is ultimately what intuitive eating is all about. And number four, she isn't afraid to eat out. This to me is key. Most North Americans eat at least a few meals a week out of the house. Some people are so busy, they eat all of their meals outside the house. I'm not saying that we should be aspiring to never cook at home again. I'm just saying that it's really refreshing to see an influencer, particularly one in the fitness community, where let's be real, it's all about following meal plans and macros really, really strictly and religiously, be able to just go out, order a meal, enjoy whatever portion of it they're in the mood for, and move on. And then finally, let's talk about what I think Natasha can maybe work on. So I really can only think of one thing, and that was that there's still a lot of weight loss talk on her channel. 
I'm really happy to see that Natasha's made attempts to focus more on intuitive eating. And I actually think she's doing a really awesome job at listening and responding to her body's needs while still incorporating some gentle nutrition into her day. Also talks about how she's now more focused on performance rather than aesthetics, which I think is great. However, if you look at some of her videos, there is still a lot of talk about kind of weight loss and metabolism, et cetera. So I think she's made a lot of great progress on her intuitive eating journey. I think we still have a little bit longer to go when it comes to completely rejecting the diet mentality. Overall, I really applaud Natasha for having this amazing, great attitude towards food, exercise, and body image. As with Stephanie Bettermore, I can fully appreciate that it's not easy to take a moderate balanced approach in the fitness industry. So I'm really hoping that Natasha and others can help us move towards a broader social shift. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with a YouTuber that you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.